Every day you use a vast array of services, although some, like talking on the phone, listening to the radio, using a credit card, catching a bus or seeing a doctor, may seem so routine that you hardly notice them unless something goes wrong or your expectations are exceeded. Other service purchases may involve more thought and be more memorable. For example, getting your hair cut or styled, booking a holiday, getting financial advice or having medical surgery. Like many consumers, you probably have some favourite services, a hairdresser, a restaurant, or an airline perhaps, that you like to patronise regularly. Have you ever stopped to think about how these organisations succeeded in delivering service that meets your needs and even exceeds your expectations? Has Mr. Smith boarded? I'll check for you. He's just boarded. Okay, go, go, go! Okay, okay, oh. Mr. Smith, there's a message for you outside. Would you kindly tell me what you're doing in the road? I'm with the help desk. You're lost. You're headed to Fresno. Fresno, right. This is the road to Albuquerque. How'd you know we were lost? The boxes told me. The boxes? RFID radio tags on the cargo. Helps track shipments. The boxes knew we were lost. Maybe the boxes should drive. Very funny. The majority of differences between the marketing of goods and services marketing have been primarily attributed to four unique characteristics. Intangibility, heterogeneity, inseparability, and perishability. Services are said to be intangible because they are performances rather than objects. They cannot be touched or seen in the same manner as goods. Rather, they are experienced, and consumers' judgments about them tend to be more subjective than objective. Heterogeneity. This refers to the potential for service performance to vary from one service transaction to the next. Services are produced by people. Consequently, variability is inherent in the production process. This lack of consistency cannot be eliminated as easily as, as it can with goods. Inseparability. Inseparability of production and consumption refers to the fact that whereas goods are first produced, then sold, and then consumed, Services are sold first and then produced and consumed simultaneously. For example, an airline passenger first purchases a ticket and then flies, consuming the in-flight service as it is produced. Finally, perishability. This means that services cannot be saved, unused capacity in services cannot be reserved, and services themselves cannot be inventory. Consequently, perishability leads to formidable challenges relating to the balancing of supply and demand. The marketing challenges associated with intangibility include difficulties in communicating services to consumers, pricing decisions, patent protection and storage of services for future use. Strategies developed to offset the challenges posed by intangibility include the use of tangible clues, development of a strong organisational image, and influencing the personal sources of information consumers use when selecting service providers.
The primary marketing problem associated with heterogeneity is that standardization and quality control are difficult for a service marketing organization to provide on a regular basis. Service organizations typically react to heterogeneity in two diverse ways. Some organizations try to standardize the performance by replacing human labor with machines. In contrast, other service organizations take advantage of the variability by offering customized services that meet individual customer needs. He'll never spill soup in your lap, and he'll never complain if you don't leave a tip. The golden android with the silver service is one of seven mechanical waiters at a robot-themed restaurant in eastern China's Shandong province. With more than 100 customers to serve in one sitting, the faithful machines have their work cut out. Sensors located underneath the robots enable them to follow tracks on the ground, while radar devices stop them from crashing into obstacles. Special magnetic cards installed into the sides of tables make sure that the waiters stop at the right spot. Customers still have to take the dishes themselves and the robots haven't yet been taught to cook, meaning the restaurant still has to employ six human staff. But the gimmick seems to be going down well with customers. At first I thought it was very mysterious, but now that I've had closer contact with them, I think it's really good. The restaurant's owner, who also happens to run a company that makes robots, says he has plans for a much bigger restaurant. He's also introduced these more realistic, if slightly sinister, female robots and others whose job is to dance to entertain the customers. Service providers engage in face-to-face -face interactions with customers who are directly involved in the service production process. Strategies developed to minimize the challenges of inseparability include the selective screening and thorough training of customer contact personnel, the implementation of strategies that attempt to manage customers throughout the service experience, and the use of multi-site facilities to overcome the inseparability difficulties associated with centralized mass production. How's your dog doing? Good. What's his name again? Robert. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Now, let's get you covered up. And try not to move. Services that are not used at their appointed time cease to exist. Moreover, because services cannot be inventoried, the few times that supply matches demand often occur by accident. A variety of strategies have been developed to try to offset the potential problems caused by perishability. Some strategies attack the problem by attempting to manage demand, while others attempt to manage supply. Demand management strategies include creative pricing strategies, reservation systems, staging demand through complementary services, and developing non-peak demand periods. Supply management strategies include using part-time employees, capacity sharing, third-party utilization, and increasing customer participation in the production process. Name, please. Uh, Seinfeld, uh, you made a reservation for a mid-size, and she's a small. <laughs> I'm kidding around, of course. Yes. Um, OK, let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, we have no mid-size available at the moment. I don't understand. I made a reservation. Do you have my reservation? Oh, yes, we do. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. That's why you have the reservation. I know why we have reservations. I don't think you do. <laughs> if you did, I'd have a car. <laughs> See, you know how to take the reservation. You just don't know how to hold the reservation. And that's really the most important part of the reservation, the holding. Anybody can just... Let me uh, speak with my supervisor. Uh, here we go. The supervisor. You know what she's saying over there? What? 
hey, Marge, see those two people over there? They think I'm talking to you. So you pretend like you're talking to me. Okay, now you start talking. Oh, you mean like this, so it looks like I'm saying something, but I'm not really saying anything at all? Okay, now you say something else, and they won't yell at me, because they thought I was checking with you. Oh, great, I think. Okay. I think that's enough. See you later. Okay, I'm sorry, my supervisor says there's nothing we can do. Yeah, it looked like you were in a real conversation over there. But we do have a compact, if you would like that. Fine. All right. Well, we have a blue Ford Escort for you, Mr. Seinfeld. Would you like insurance? Yeah, you better give me the insurance, because I am going to beat the hell out of this one. 